There he is, Brandon Staley with us, and we see the Chargers with that 21st pick in the 2023 draft. Hey, we pulled it off. There it is. If you were watching the show, it was seamless. You would never it was anything known. but seamless here, but it worked. And here he is. Great to see you. How are you? Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, good. Good. Congratulations on the year. Thank you. Yeah. I know it didn't end the way you wanted it to. It still was a damn good year. Appreciate it. Yeah. How do you organizationally, and I wasn't going to start here, but how do you organizationally get past a moment like what you had? Because that can linger. We've seen it with other teams. It can leave a scar. It can be hard to get. What do you do to just turn the page on that and forget about it? Well, I think the big thing is joining up with the right guys. I think what we have is a lot of people that are invested in our place. And when you lose like that, it's just going to mean more to you the next time that you're out there. And I think that's what's really important um, is you take full responsibility uh, for what happened. Um, but you know that, hey, there are a lot of special people in that locker room that you have what it takes. I think part of that game about telling the truth is, hey, you were up 27 to nothing in the first half. Yeah. Um, there's a reality to that. And then there's a reality of 31 to 30. Um, but I know the, the type of players that we have in that locker room, the type of coaches that we have, and you know we're going to respond. And the amount that our group has invested in our team over the last two years, um, it's going to mean so much more the next time we're out there. And that's part about building a football team is you've got to go through a bunch in order to accomplish your ultimate goal. And I think that's really an impar important part of the process. Yeah. How do you personally process it, though? Because I try to put myself in your shoes, and I'll have a rough day from time to time. And it's like, it's great. The dog doesn't care. That's part of the healing for me. <laughs> dog doesn't care whether you had the best day ever, the worst day ever. The dog's just happy to see you. Like, how do you sleep at night? How do you get through it? How long does it bother you when you knew you had this and it, and it just fell apart the way it did? Yeah, I think you know it's part of competition. I think if you, if you, I've been following sports my whole life, and the, there's some of the greatest coaches, players that have gone through something like that. Yeah. I think that you know that that is a part of sports, that if you coach or play long enough, something like that can happen. Um, and it's going to go the other way, too, where you make a comeback like that someday, too. And so, uh, but what I think gets you past it is knowing that you're doing it with the right people and that you're getting on to the next thing. you got to get it moving. And, and I think that's the tough about the playoffs is you're watching these other people compete. Um, that's the hardest part, um, but you got to get a lot of work done um, after you go through something like that, and that's what helps get you past it. Last year, you know, when we lost, um, at my, after my first year, you're able to go make some big moves. You go trade for Khalil Mack. You yeah. go onboard a bunch of good players. You right. go draft a bunch of good players. You, you know, this year you get, you know, some new coaches in, and, um, you know, we're about to go through this whole acquisition yeah. process. That's what gets you moving, um, and then, you know, you take a look at your, your team, and, and then you go build it in the spring, and get it going in training camp but you made some big yeah i want to go there you made some big just decisions after you know, your your offense you know, it was good right did a lot of good things you got to the playoffs but you know what led you to going you know what i, th I think we need to change or we need a little bit more of the offensive coordinator position yeah chris i think i think you, you said it i think you know um the quality that we have within our football team yeah. and, and that's what you're searching for is that that optimum quality and the yeah. optimum level and maximizing I like, what that yeah. quarterback can do and all of that for sure and yeah. i felt like there was another gear that we could get to and i right. feel like we were able to to find a guy that i felt like i was really excited to team up with that would be great for not just our offense but our team right you know kellen um i've been such a fan of his for so long former quarterback loved what he did as a player coach his son we kind of been brought up the same way that sure. way and uh, and then just being able to face him, you know, compete against him, you know, the, the type of offense that he was able to build in Dallas, what he did for Dak, that skill group, um, was just very excited and getting to know him as a person, as a competitor. Um, he's been fantastic and, and we're very fortunate to have him. Yeah. What's your objective this year for navigating a division that isn't getting any easier? Not with Sean Payton coaching the Broncos and the Chiefs are the Chiefs and the Raiders, who knows what they're going to do once they find a quarterback. What are you focused on in an effort to try to get the Chargers to rise above the rest. Yeah, Mike, I think what you got to put the focus is on the Chargers. You can't be worried about what everybody else is doing. you got to keep strengthening your team, maximizing your team, uh, creating the team in your vision, um, creating the alignment within the organization uh, in order to get that done. And, um, you know, competition is going to bring out the best in you. It doesn't matter what the sport. There have been divisions like this throughout the you know the history of sports and what, what you got to do is strengthen your football team get the belief going within your building and then putting that belief into action and and I think that we've done a good job of that through two years um, but there's a lot of work to do there's a big picture question I want to ask you about here in the combine you know we're seeing more coaches kind of skip it right not mm -hmm. that it's not important but they're going to you know and, and I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer I'd be one that'd be here like you 
But you know, what, what, yeah, kind of what's your feel as far as where this is going, and maybe why coaches or explain that to people why they would want to skip out. It's a tough time for you guys. Free yeah. agency is about to start too. Well, I think I think number one, you respect everyone's decision, but I think the timeline for each staff is different depending on how long you play. I think with the calendar the way it is, I mean, if you play deep into the you know AFC NFC Championship yeah. game, Super Bowl, it can be very challenging from a staff standpoint to get your staff together, right. get them headed in the right direction, let alone get free agency started. So, you know kicking off your calendar can be challenging. I think that's why some people stay back. But, um, you know, I think this is a chance where the entire NFL comes together. And I think what's amazing about the NFL is are the people in it. Yeah. And there's a lot of components that make the NFL special. And whether it's, you know, meeting with, you know, uh, agents, you know, for the free agency process, whether it's meeting the, the prospects for the combine, meeting with the media, it brings people together. And I know that it's something that we take seriously. And um, and at the same time, you're working during the morning, doing charger stuff, keeping your football going um, so that you can stay in rhythm. So, hey, we're here to maximize the week and, and get to be with you guys for, for a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, that's you the wanted. only downside. That's, you that's the reason to stay home. <laughs> Trust us. It's Damn, definitely I gotta go a reason see to not show up. And Sims. Let me think about it. <laughs> I got a question for you, given the fact that you are known for going forward on fourth down and being aggressive i'm going to give you a scenario and i want to know whether or not not necessarily black or white would go for it or not but just what factors you would consider in making your decision all right fourth and three from your own 32 down one point with 10 and a half minutes left in the game what factors would you consider in deciding whether to go for it well i mean i think how we're playing on what both sides of the football i think that's something that's that's big um what your kicking situation is like what the weather's like uh, who's on the other sideline who are you playing against quarterback coach um you know how they're playing um and then i think that feeling that you have you know what you know type of play call do you feel like you have um in your arsenal how many of those types of plays you've already run throughout the course of the game uh I think all that goes into making a decision like that. But if you've got confidence in your group, um, you, know, you can't be afraid to, to make that decision. I think, you know, way I, I look at it, I look at it the way my father coached me as a young kid is, you know, um, you got to trust your guys to go to go make plays. And if you if you have the belief in your guys and you feel like with all things being equal, that you believe in your guys, um, then you got to go give them an opt to compete. Um, you know, but again, no no situation is the same uh, within a football game, and there's so many factors that I think are challenging in real time. I think what people, you know, that's happening in real time, and you got to make those determinations, and um, you know, and at the same time, you got to be able to live live with it one way or the other, whether it goes down or not. Um, but you can be proud of your process either way. Um, so that's how I've tried to do it since I've been the coach. Uh, some, you know, some games are different than others. Some stretches of the season are different than others. Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to try and trust your guys one way or the other. What yeah. I hear coming through, though, the confidence in your guys, yeah. the confidence in your guys. And I gave you that scenario because that was what Nick Sirianni faced in the sure. Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Down one, 28-27. No he said 32 out of 32 coaches would have punted there. And we think that there are plenty of coaches that <laughs> maybe would have gone for it there and kept the it's ball a tough away one. from That's the a really and tough one. Mahomes. Now that they, they woke up and they were, they sure. were getting it done. Yeah, man, and, you know, I think, um, you know, Nick has been one of those guys, you know, I just playing against them in 2021 and then certainly following them. I mean, you know, he's been an aggressive coach. I trust in his guys. I mean, they've been one of the top teams in the league for two years. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough looking back when it doesn't go down, no, no matter what. Um, when it doesn't go down, you know, that's the toughest part of it. But you just you're proud of your process. And, you know, you just know that in, in, in sports that that happens and you just got to be ready for the next stop and um, bringing your people together that, hey, when we do get that situation. And there's so many other things that, that factor into it after that, 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 that decide the game. That's what you got to be able to do as a coach is bring it all together, explain yeah. to people what happened, right. be open about it, um, and do better the next time. Yeah. Well, we appreciate the insights very much. It's great to see you, as always. Congratulations on the finish last year. Here's to taking it another step or two farther in 2023. There he is, Brandon Staley, coach of the Chargers. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.